ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech and the best of words are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa khayru al-hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru al-umur muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things we really invent into this religion of ours wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ And every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعْدٍ My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we remind ourselves as Allah reminded us in the Qur'an إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي الْتَرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ وَلَنْ تَجِدَ لَهُمْ نَصِيرًا إلا الذين تابوا وأصلحوا واعتصموا بالله وأخلصوا دينهم لله فأولئك مع المؤمنين وسوف يؤتي المؤمنين أجرا عظيما الله سبحانه وتعالى he says in the Quran what means verily the hypocrites those who are labeled as hypocrites by Allah سبحانه وتعالى they will be in the lowest and depth deepest parts of the hellfire no helper will you find for them except those who repent from their hypocrisy and they do righteous deeds and they hold fast to Allah only worshiping him and associating no one or nothing in partner with him and doing good only for the sake of Allah not to show off then they will be with the believers and Allah will grant the believers a great reward my dear brothers and sisters in Islam nifaq hypocrisy is something which can destroy the heart and spoil the heart. And it's not as simple as we define it here as you do one thing and you say, or you say one thing and you do another. It goes beyond that. And we touched upon the signs and we began upon those signs in our previous khutbah. A poet, as a reminder, he once said, I acquainted myself with evil, not for evil, but in order to avoid it. You must know these signs of hypocrisy so that you avoid them. So you avoid being labeled a hypocrite by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first of those signs we mentioned in a famous hadith, and we talked about them last week, but as a reminder because of their importance, mentioned, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَرْبَعٌ مَنْ كُنَّ فِيهِ خَسْلَةٌ مِنْهُنَّ كَانَتْ فِيهِ خَسْلَةٌ مِنَ النِّفَاقِ حَتَّى يَدَعَهَا إِذَا, إذا, إذا تُمْنَ خَانٍ وَإِذَا حَدَّثَ كَذَبْ وَإِذَا, غ... وإذا عَاهَدَ غَذَرْ وَإِذَا خَاسَمَ فَجَرْ رواه البخاري. We touched upon those four signs mentioned in the famous hadith of the Prophet wasallam, where he said there are four things. Whoever possesses all of them is a pure hypocrite. But whoever has one of them or two of them or the likes of that, then they have a characteristic of hypocrisy until they abandon that. Those four things, when he is trusted, he is disloyal, he is treacherous, he doesn't keep to his word, to his trust. When he speaks, he lies, the one who lies. This person has an aspect of nifaq, of hypocrisy. And Allah, he said, وَاللَّهُ يَشْهَدُ إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَكَاذِبُونَ Allah, he said what means, Allah does witness that the hypocrites are indeed liars. So lying is from one of the greatest characteristics of the hypocrite. When he makes a promise, he breaks it. 
He doesn't keep His promises. Rather, He is known to break them and not fulfill them. And when He argues, He behaves in an insolent manner. He argues, he's, when He argues with others, He's rude, He lacks respect, and He behaves in a way which is not sanctioned in our deen. So these were four signs of the hypocrites where we left off. We left off with number five, laziness in worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَالَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said what means, and when they stand up for prayer, they stand up without earnestness, in a lazy state. When the prayer comes, they have no, it's like they're asleep, like they're being dragged into something they don't want to be dragged into. This shows that the whisper of shaitan and hypocrisy can be in the heart of a person by them being lazy in respect to their worship, lazy with respect to their prayer, and we'll discuss that a little further in the coming signs. When the prayer comes as if, as if it's a burden to them, as if they have to do something they don't want to do. Lazy with respect to coming to the salah and being in the first row. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ لَوْ أَنَّ النَّاسَ يَعْلَمُونَ مَا فِي النِّدَاءِ وَفِي الصَّفِّ الْأَوَّلِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَجِدُوا إِلَّا أَنْ يَسْتَهِمُوا عَلَيْهِ لَأَسْتَهِمُوا عَلَيْهِ The Prophet ﷺ, he said, if the people knew what was in, what the reward was in, coming, the nada, the call to prayer, the adhan, and to being in the first row, and the only way they could get there was to draw lots, then they would draw lots to do so. This is the value of the first row, yet many people don't care. They don't care about the first row. They'd rather be comfortable. There's a laziness to them. وَقَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم وَخَيْرَ الصُّفُوفِ وَخَيْرَ الصُّفُوفِ الرِّجَالِ مُقَدَّمَهَا That the best rows for the men are the first row, then the row behind it and the likes of those matters. So when there's a laziness to come to the prayer early to get to the first row, when there's laziness to remember Allah, to invite others to Islam, towards knowledge and the good sittings, we have a halaqa, alhamdulillah, starting that is every Sunday from Maghrib to Isha. So if you have this Jum'ah, say a half an hour, and you add this 45 minutes on Sunday, that's an hour and a half, there's 168 hours in the week. There's 168 hours in the week. The ones who don't attend these sittings, either you think you're a scholar or you're lazy and you have laziness in your heart. It can't be that every Sunday at that time someone is just busy. Or somebody is, yani, always has something to do. You can revolve your life around this deen. And that's the way you should live as a Muslim. So coming to the circles of knowledge, this should be something that you do if indeed you are not lazy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, Ya Yahya, khud al-kitab biquwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, Oh Yahya, who is the equivalent of John, yani, biblically. He said, hold on to the book with firmness. Hold on to that book with firmness. The prophets, the ones who followed them in earnestness, they were the best of those holding firm, not being lazy with respect to their deen, but always giving their energy, their life, their strength, everything they have, to, this, to supporting the cause they were upon. But the hypocrite, he drags his feet as if he's being chained, as if he's being drugged, or dra- dragged to the masjid, sitting in the back rows, not contemplating what the imam says, not understanding what is being recited and the likes of these matters. This laziness is from the shaitan because he wants you to be lazy so that you miss out on acts of worship. He wants you to be lazy so you may do the act of worship and get no benefit from it. But you can fight him. And the ways to fight him is by fighting that laziness you have. An Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu and the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal ya'qidu shaitan ala قافية على قافية رأس أحدكم إذا هو نام ثلاث عقد يضرب كل عقدة عليك ليل طويل فأرقد فإن استيقظ فذكر الله إن حلت عقدة فإن توضع فإن توضع إن حلت عقدة فإن صلى إن حلت عقدة فأصبح نشيطا طيب النفس وإلا أصبح خبيث النفs كسنانا the Prophet ﷺ, he said in this authentic hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, Shaitan, Satan, he wraps three knots, or he ties three knots behind the back of the head of every one of us when we sleep. And on over every knot, he reads and he breathes, upon you is a long night, so stay asleep. On every night knot that he ties of the three knots, he ties behind the back of the head. 
So when one of you wakes up and he remembers Allah, you undo one knot. When you get up then and you make wudu, you undo the second knot. When you then go and pray, you undo the third knot. And the one who, who does this, he gets up energetic and with a good heart in the morning. But the one who does not do this, who does not remember Allah when he awakens, does not make the wudu and the salah, then he gets up lazy and with a mischievous heart. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, laziness in worship is a sign of hypocrisy that you must rectify in your heart so that you do not meet Allah with any traces of nifaq, of hypocrisy. In Surah Al-Ma'un, we always hear, فَوَيْنٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ So woe be to those who perform the salah. Why would Allah say humiliation upon those who establish the prayer? Or wayn can be a valley, a river, in, uh, a valley in the depths of the hellfire in Jahannam. But Allah said it's for the performers of prayer. But He clarified it in the next ayah. And He said, الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ those who when they get to their prayers, they do so beyond their fixed stated times. They delay their prayers. And most of the time that delay is not because of some emergency. Most of that time that delay is because of some laziness. So even those who establish the prayers, you're not doing Allah a favor. You could have a valley deep in the darkest parts of Jahannam by being lazy and delaying your prayers past their fixed times. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Imam Muslim, he reports in his Sahih, a hadith from Al-Aswad ibn Yazid al-Iraqi al-Abid, who said, I asked Aisha radiallahu anha, may Allah be pleased with her, when did the Prophet wasallam used to wake up for the night prayer, for tahajjud, for qiyam al-layl? So she replied to him, he used to get up, وَإِذَا سَمِعَ الصَّرَاحِ قَامَ فَصَلَّى When he would hear the rooster crow, he would get up and pray. And he would get up in a hurry. He would get up and jump up, leap up, so that he could get to his worship. This is the proof of his fierceness and his firmness of faith. And how we should try to get up for our prayers. He didn't get up slow. He was determined to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So question yourselves and ask yourselves, Am I lazy with respect to my prayers? Praying them with focus and on their fixed times. Am I lazy when it comes to looking for things that I can give sadaqah to, give charity to? Am I lazy with fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Am I lazy with the remembrance of Allah? Spending much of my days just letting the time fly by rather than remembering Allah and praising Him. Am I lazy with seeking forgiveness? Seeking forgiveness. So many of us don't say it except maybe after salah or in salah or at no other times. When كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يستغفر الله ويتوب إليه في اليوم مئة مرة when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in one day in every day he would say استغفر الله and repent to Allah one hundred times a day and he was promised the highest of Jannah and yet here we are sin upon sin upon sin and we're lazy with seeking forgiveness from Allah سبحانه وتعالى are you lazy with attending the lessons of Deen of inviting people to Islam of educating others about Islam, all of these things you should question yourself with. Because laziness in ibadah is a sign of nifaq. It is a sign of hypocrisy. May Allah protect us from it. So seek refuge with Allah as the Prophet ﷺ used to do. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-bukhli wal kasa. The Prophet ﷺ used to say, Oh Allah, I seek refuge with you, in you, from greediness, miseryness, and from being lazy. So we should always seek refuge with Allah from this laziness. Another sign of nifaq is al-riya, showing off. This is a sign of nifaq. As Allah said, وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَالَةً يُرَاءُونَ النَّاسِ وَلَا يَفْتُرُونَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Allah, He said, and we heard the first portion in the previous mentioning. He said, and when one of you stands for prayer, they stand without earnestness, in a state of laziness, very lazy. To be seen of men, yura'oon al-nas. Allah is describing the hypocrites and what belongs to them of characteristics and traits. And they do not hold Allah in remembrance except a little. From those who are, from the characteristics of those who will be with the believers, as we mentioned in the first ayah, وَأَخْرُصُ دِينَهُمْ لِلَّهِ That they are the ones who do good deeds only for the sake of Allah, not for the sake of showing off. So showing off is from the signs of nifaq. Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, he said, مَنْ سَمَّعَ سَمَّعَ اللَّهُ بِهِ وَمَنْ يُرَاءِ يُرَاءَ اللَّهُ بِهِ 
Um, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said in the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, he who lets the people hear his good deeds intentionally to win their praise, then Allah will let the people know his real intentions on the Day of Judgment. The one who wants people to praise them, to say that they're so generous, that they're so righteous, that they have so much taqwa and the likes of these matters, then Allah will show the people the real intention on the Day of Resurrection. And he who does good things in public to show off, to win the praise of the people, then Allah will disclose his real attention, intentions and humiliate him on the Day of Resurrection. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, many times we see each other praying in the masjid in a state of humility, with humbleness, in a slow way, with submissiveness, in front of the people. But when you pray alone, you pray that same two rak'ahs that took seven minutes, you pray them in one minute. This is nifaq, this is hypocrisy, this is fooling, your, you're only fooling others and you might be fooling yourself at the same time. The one who shows off has an aspect of hypocrisy because his actions are done for the sake of the people. So the people can praise him. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم أَخْوَفَ مَا أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمْ الشِّرْقُ الْأَزْغَرْ الْرِيَاءِ The Prophet ﷺ, he said in this hadith, which is Hassan, in the Muslim Imam Ahmad, he said, the thing that I fear the most for you is this minor shirk. When we hear shirk, we should get very afraid because Allah said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah said, Allah will not forgive the sin of shirk without a sincere repentance, but He'll forgive any other sin other than that as He wishes, as He pleases. So He said, the thing I fear for you the most is this minor shirk, riya, showing off. So this should be something that we expand in our minds, that we make ourselves conscious of that we don't do things just to be seen by men so that we can be praised or respected more or honored. Call upon Allah with the beautiful dua of the Prophet ﷺ that he used to teach and say to his companions, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an ashruka bika wa ana a'lam wa astaghfiruka mimma la a'lam. The Prophet ﷺ himself again used to make the dua, O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from knowingly associating partners with you. And I seek your forgiveness from committing shirk that I don't recognize or that I don't know. Always make this why? Because tawheed is what is essential for the mercy of Allah to make it to Jannah. And its opposite is shirk. The evilest and the worst of sins, the grandest of sins to associate partners with Allah in worship. Showing off a riya is a sign of nifaq. Lacking the remembrance of Allah, وَلَا يَفْتَرُونَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا And they do not remember Allah except a little. Allah concluded this ayah of describing the munafiqeen of the hypocrites by saying that they don't remember Allah except a little bit. They're not eager to remember Him. The tongue, the heart, they're dead when it comes to the remembrance of Allah. And Sahih Muslim, the Prophet Wasallam, he, he said, تِلْكَ صَلَاةُ الْمُنَافِقِ تِلْكَ صَلَاةُ الْمُنَافِقِ تِلْكَ صَلَاةُ الْمُنَافِقِ this is the prayer of the hypocrite. This is the prayer of the hypocrite. This is the prayer of the hypocrite. And he said this three times. He said he is the one who watches the sun until it comes close to its setting. In another narration, till the sun becomes weak in strength, yellow in color. And then he stands and he strikes the ground with four rak'ahs to get the prayer in. وَلَا يَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ فِيهِ فِيهَا إِلَّا قَلِيلًا And he doesn't remember Allah in that prayer one bit, except for a little bit. He's praying real fast just to get the prayer in, delaying it towards its forbidden time. Even this Asr, he was saying it regarding the Asr prayer. And this is the most neglected prayer from all of us, because of the time that it usually falls. Even though Allah said, حَافِظُ عَلَى الصَّلَوَاتِ وَالصَّلَاةِ الْوُسْطَى وَقُومُ لِلَّهِ قَانِتِينَ Even though Allah, He said, safeguard your prayers, the five obligatory prayers, especially the middle prayer, this is Salat al-Asr, and stand before Allah with uh, obedience. Stand before Allah with obedience, wanting to please Him and earn His reward. This is Salat al-Asr, yet it's so neglected, and many people delay it past its time where it should be done, when the sun begins to lose its strength and its glow. The time for Asr is theoretically over. Yet some will then even push it further and further till the sun is setting. وَالْعَيَادُ billah. Ibn al-Qayyim al jawziyyah he said, if there was no benefit to be gained from the remembrance of Allah, except that it excludes you from being a hypocrite, then this would be enough. 
If just remembering Allah was the thing you did constantly and consistently, and the reward for it was that it would take away you being a munafiq, just by doing that, then this is enough of a reward. Even if this exclusion was your only reward. Even if the only reward would be that you would not be considered a hypocrite, this is great enough. Yet on top of it, we get a reward for every tasbih, for every tahmeed, for every tahleed, for every subhanallah, for every alhamdulillah, for every la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Ten rewards, ten rewards, ten rewards. And Allah builds it. But if there was no reward for it, and the only reward was that you would not have nifaq or hypocrisy in your heart, then this would be sufficient for the person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, أَلَا بِذِكْرَ اللَّهِ تُطْمَئِنَّ الْقُلُوبِ Allah, He tells us, indeed with the remembrance of Allah will the hearts find rest. This remembrance of Allah, this dhikr, pleading to Allah, reading the book of Allah, saying the tasbih and tahmeed and tahleel and takbir and the likes of these matters, all of this is what will make the heart find rest, find comfort, find repose, find peace. Not the other garbage we've taken to, to try and get ourselves out of difficulty, out of sadness, out of anxiety, out of depression, out of whatever else we may be facing. Allah says, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ Allah says, then remember me and I will remember you. Who doesn't want this? Allah has knowledge, sight, hearing over everything He created, without a doubt, whether we see it or not. But Allah says, if you remember me, then I will remember you. If you remember me, I will support you. I will guide you. I will comfort you. I will console you. I will get you through whatever you need to be gotten through. But you must remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ ذِكْرًا كَثِيرًا O you who believe, engage yourself in Allah's praises and do so often if you want to be a believer. Remembrance of Allah. If you want to be a believer. The remembrance of Allah, it is a must that you have it. Some of the Salaf, the righteous predecessors of Ummah, used to say remembering Allah often is that your tongue does not cease to be moist with the remembrance of Allah. كَمَا أَمَرَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ لَا يَزُولُ لِسَانُكَ رَطْبًا مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ As the Prophet ﷺ, he said in the authentic hadith, حَسَنْ سُنَّ نَبِ التِّرْمِذِي Do not let your tongue cease to be moist with the remembrance of Allah. Never let your tongue cease to remember Allah. Always keep it wet, meaning keep saying and keep repeating the remembrances of Allah. So remember Allah often. After your prayers, when leaving your home in the morning and in the evening, when entering and leaving the home, when entering and leaving the masajid, before you eat and after you eat, before you drink and after you drink, when you're putting on new clothes, when you see rain, when you see wind, when you see thunder, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Glorify Him and praise Him and seek His forgiveness because this is what will keep the heart alive. <clears throat> Imam Muslim, he narrates that the Prophet ﷺ, he said that I say subhanallah and alhamdulillah and la ilaha illallah and Allahu Akbar ahabu ilayya mimma tala'at alayhi shams This is more beloved to me than, than this is more beloved to me than anything upon which the sun rises. Easy words to say, so deep in meaning, praising your Lord, glorifying your Lord, ex- exclaiming His grandeur and His majesty over the heavens and the earth and affirming His oneness. This is greater, these phrases, so light on the tongue, are greater than anything upon which the sun rises. The Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, he said, مَثَلُ الَّذِي يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ وَالَّذِي لَا يَذْكُرُهُ مَثَلُ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّتِ The Prophet ﷺ, he said in the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, the similitude of the one who remembers his Lord, and the one who does not remember his Lord, is like the living and the dead. The heart that remembers Allah, you can say this is a heart that's living. But the heart that does not remember Allah, even though it may breathe and walk and talk and blink and whatever else, this heart is as dead as a heart on a person who has been buried. This is the similitude of the one who remembers his Lord and who does not remember his Lord. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he said, the remembrance of Allah to the heart is like water to the fish. What happens to the fish when you take it out of water? Even the little kids, the babies know this. You take a fish out of water, it dies. So when the heart has no remembrance of its Lord, of its Creator, of the one who provides everything for him or her, then this is as good as a dead heart. May Allah protect us from this. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما 
kathira wa ba'd. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, nifaq, hypocrisy, is such a disease in the heart of the people, may Allah protect us from it, that we must learn its signs so that we have a better chance to avoid it. We get to the eighth sign that we will mention in these last two weeks. It's the hastiness in the prayer. The one who prays in a rush. The one who, de- not just that they, they, they delay the prayer, but they pray it fast. They're inattentive. They're unaware of what they're saying. They make little remembrance of Allah. They pray fast. They read short surah. They say what is the minimum in ruku' and sujood. There's no presence of the heart. There's no idea that Allah, even though you're here in this building, Allah who is above the seven heavens, above His arsh, separate from His creation. Because Allah we know, as we affirm always our aqeedah, He is not everywhere. His knowledge is everywhere. His eyesight is everywhere. He hears everything. But He Himself is stawa ala al-arsh. He ascended above His throne in a manner which suits His majesty. Yet He knows when you're in the darkest, deepest of buildings, what you're saying and what you're doing. But the one who in these situations, they have no presence of heart. They're not praying to Allah, knowing that Allah sees them. They have no fear, no longing, no craving or love of or for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This person has a heart which is in danger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, successful indeed are the believers. Again, what is to be mentioned now is traits of those believers. I can't say I'm a mu'min or a believer. You cannot say you're a mu'min or a believer. Allah has to give you that title on the day of resurrection. Only Allah can give you that. But to earn it, you have to fulfill what you were commanded to do to be from the believers. Here he said, successful indeed are the believers. Those who are submissive and humble in their prayers. الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ they're praying their prayer with some submiss- submissiveness. They're praying their prayer, focusing as much as possible, as if Allah is in front of them, but knowing that they can't see Him, He sees Him. These are the people who Allah, He described the believers' characteristics, first and foremost, with those who are submissive and humble in their prayers. Prophet Muhammad wasallam He told a man once who prayed, إِرْجَعْ فَصَلِّ فَإِنَّكَ لَمْ تُصَلِّ Go back and pray, for you have not prayed. So the man did so, he came back again, A second time, go back and pray, you have not prayed. A third time, the man said, I'm doing what I know. Teach me so that I may do it correctly. So the Prophet ﷺ, he told him, he said, so when you're ready to come for, for prayer, فَكَبِّرْ Say takbir al ihram say Allahu Akbar to enter the prayer. ثُمَّ أَقْرَأْ مَا تَيَسَّرَ مَعَكَ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ Then read what is easy for you from the Qur'an, Surah Al-Fatiha, and what else after that. ثُمَّ أَرْكَعْ حَتَّى تَطْمَئِنَّ رَاكِعًا Then make ruku'ah until you make sure you're in ruku'ah. Not this one motion ruku'ah where you go down, you touch your knees and you're already popping, coming back up. Go into ruku'ah until your bones settle, until you're comfortable. Your back parallel to the ground, not further down, not hunched over unless you have some medical condition that prohibits it. You make ruku'ah properly. Your hands firmly pressed on your knees. Then, when your bones have settled, you say, Subhana Rabbi al Awim three times or more. Nothing limits you to three. And it should be said like this, Subhana Rabbi al Awim not Subhana, Subhana, Subhana. As the people pray it. This is foolishness. This is an aspect of hypocrisy. Then stand up until you are sure that you have stood up and your bones are straight and you have settled. Saying as you come up, Sami Allahu liman hamidah. When you're standing and firm and settled on both your feet and your back has straightened, then you say, Rabbana wa lakil hamd, hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fi. And we remind the brothers here and the sisters to not add anything that's not from the sunnah because many say, wa shukr. Rabbana, Rabbana wa lakil hamd wa shukr. And this wa shukr has no dalil, no basis, no evidence in the sunnah. So if you leave it off, you will get rewarded, even if you've been doing it. But you should not add what is not from the sunnah. ثُمَّ أَسْجُدْ حَتَّى تَطْمَئِنَّ سَاجِدًا Then make sajda until you are sure you are in sajda. Till you have done it and your bones have settled in sajda. And then begin saying, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Again, not saying, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. And then popping back up. The way you pray, this is characteristic of whether you're in tune or not. 
You don't want to be characterized with hypocrisy by Allah. So take time in your prayers. We remind each other again that Allah's Messenger وسلم, He said, I was commanded to prostrate on seven areas or seven bones. The nose and the forehead must touch the ground with equal pressure in your sajda. Many of the brothers that we see still make sajda on their forehead and their nose is off the ground. Both must be firm on the ground. The two palms must be firm on the ground. Not the wrist, not the forearm, not the elbow. Because the Prophet وسلم, he said, do not make sajda as the dog sits. The dog, it sits with its whole forearm and paw on the ground. Only the two hands, the palms should be touching the ground. The wrist and the forearm should be off of the ground. The knees and the toes, the toes should be touching the ground. Many have the toes in air. They're not touching the ground. They should be touching the ground. Make sajda properly. Then sit up from sajda until you're sure you have sat. Not in a rocking motion again. We see this day in and day out. Someone praying so fast. Allah does not need you. You need Him. The sajda, He said, the Prophet ﷺ, he said about that sajda, it is the closest you are to your Lord. So be humble in it and make dua. You have some who've asked questions to me that I heard from so and so and so and so, you can't make dua in sajda. This is as an authentic hadith as it gets. He said, Take time in your sajda. Make dua in your sajda. It's the closest you are to your Lord. You're putting yourself, your face on the ground. Allah from above the seven heavens and the earth can hear you and see you and is listening to you. So make sajda in it and don't regard it. He said, وَأَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ فِي صَلَاتِكَ كُلِّهَا He said, and do this manner of praying in all of your prayers. Fard and sunnah. Take your time. Bow properly. Stand up properly. Make sajda properly. Sit between the two sajdas. There's a dua to say that even Imam Ahmad, he considered wajib, part of the salah, you have to do it. Saying, Rabbi khirli, my Lord forgive me, between the two sajdas. Many people sit up, by the time you don't even see them sit up, their back is still rolling back, and they thrust themselves back down for the second sajda. Be mindful of this. When you stand, to, when you, in the way you pray, look here and looking here and there in the prayer, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, هُوَ إِخْتِلَاسٌ يَخْطَلِسُهُ الشَّيْطَانِ مِنْ صَلَاةِ الْعَبْدِ When you look around in your prayer, this is shaitan stealing from your prayer. You're losing rewards from your prayers. When you're praying and you're standing, your eyesight should be where your forehead and your nose go in sajda. When you're in ruku', it should be straight down, not between your feet, and not where you're making sajda. When you're in tashahud, your eyesight should be fixed upon your finger, affirming the oneness of Allah, pointing towards the Kaaba in which we face as our Qibla. This is where the eyes should be, the one who looks away, it's like stealing in the prayer. And lastly, وَأَسْوَأَ السِّرْقَ الَّذِي يَسْرِقْ صَلَاتَهُ And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, and the worst of thieves is the one who steals from his prayer. قَالُوا, يا قالوا وَكَيْفَ يَسْرِقُ صَلَاتَهُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ So the companions asked the Prophet ﷺ, how does somebody steal from their prayer? قَالَ لَا يَتِمُّ رَقُوعُهَا وَلَا سُجُودِهَا he says, this person does not, does not do the ruku' and the sujood properly. This is how you steal from your prayer. Ask questions when you don't know. Learn the Prophet's prayer, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Pray as you've seen me praying. Learn it. Ask questions so you learn it and do it properly, regardless of what you were taught. We were all taught a certain way that we learned was wrong in multiple facets. Are you that proud, that egotistical, that you can't give it up for the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ? Come back to this deen. Don't be hasty in your prayer. Take your time in your prayer. Focus in your prayer so that you can be written from the believers. Allahumma khalil al-Muslimin wal-Muslimat wal-Mu'minin wal-Mu'minat al-Ahyai minhum wal-Amwat innaka anta sami'un qareeb al-Mujib al-Da'awat ya muqallib al-Qulub thabit qulubna ala deenik ya muqallib al-Qulub thabit qulubna ala deenik يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك سبحان ربك رب العزة يا ما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين